الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you? I hope that all of you know good health and the studying goes well with you I'm Dr. Nura Sabah from Karbala Medical College and I will present to you a lecture about antenatal care and screening The objectives of the lecture First, we should know the definition and the aims of antenatal care and we will talk shortly about the visits that each pregnant woman should do and what are the management of common pregnancy complications and the second part of the lecture will be about antenatal screening and also the definition and aims of antenatal screening and what are the principles of the screening and the diseases that should be screened during pregnancy so, what is antenatal care? It describes the stand standard schedule of appointments, investigation, and interventions that offered to all pregnant women. The aims of antenatal care are first to optimize pregnancy outcomes for women and babies. This is the main uh, aim of the care. Is to have a pregnant woman and her baby in a good health. The second thing is to prevent, detect, and manage those factors that adversely affect the health of the mother and the baby. Three, to provide advice and support for the woman and to deal with the common symptoms of pregnancy. And also, uh, during the care, we should screen for infections, hematological conditions, fetal anomalies, and clinical conditions that may occur or complicate the pregnancy. Throughout pregnancy, all women should have at least eight visits with a health care provider, either with a midwifery, if she's a low risk pregnancy with the general practitioner or uh, with a doctor specialist in the uh, casualty on a private clinic uh, on these visits uh, low risk pregnancy should be at least eight especially if the pregnant woman is multiparous one if it is a primary parous the visits should be at least 11 and if the woman is high risk uh, for complications uh, the visits will be uh, more than that so uh, in the uh, first visit uh, which is the first contact visit and this contact uh, should uh, the woman uh, make it uh, just when she know that she's pregnant just after the pregnancy test is positive in this contact visit we should categorize uh, the pregnant women either into a low risk or co uh, high risk pregnancy those with high risk pregnancy uh, for example patients who are uh, pregnant after the age of 35 or a teenage pregnancy patients with a specific medical condition patients with a previous cesarean sections or recurrent miscarriages for example uh, patients who have uh, uh, a grand multipara more than five children and uh, uh, patients, for example, who get pregnant after ovulation induction or IVF. So, this will be a high risk pregnancy, and her uh, antenatal care should be with a consultant obstetrician, not with general practitioner or with uh, a midwifery or in a primary health care center. And the number of visits will be more. If it is low risk, uh, the number of visits can be less than. Uh, يعني, uh, 11 sorry 11 and, and when she is primary parous or 8 when she is uh, multi parous woman and in the first, uh, first uh, visit we should prescribe to the patient folic acid the folic acid is to prevent neural tube defects the dose for uh, all pregnant women who are at low risk of development of neural tube defect is 0.4 milligram and it should be started before pregnancy, three months before pregnancy and continue uh, in the first trimester of pregnancy. 
But if the pregnant women have high incidence of uh, getting pregnant with a child with a neural tube defect, so she should take 5 mg uh, folic acid. Those patients who have history of siblings with a neural tube defect, or if she, if the pregnant woman herself have history of uh, had history of uh, neural tube defect, or her husband uh, was uh, born with a neural tube defect, or she, if she's uh, on anti-epileptic drugs, those who are uh, obese or more with obesity also should take five milligram folic acid. Otherwise, the dose is 0.4 milligram. We should give the, uh, the patient advice about food hygiene and lifestyle advice. Uh, for example, if she's a smoker or alcoholic, she should quit these uh, two things. I will talk about um, the visits that are very important during a pregnancy, and every pregnant woman should do it. If she cannot do the eight or 11 visits, there is another visit uh, in addition to the first contact that every pregnant woman should do. The booking visit, which is done between 10 to 12 weeks of gestation. In this visit, we will uh, give the patient advice about her nutrition, uh, give her supplementation with vitamin D, because vitamin D supplementation uh, is very important during the pregnancy and during lactation. And if the patient have vitamin D deficiency, she should take a therapeutic dose of vitamin D. Assessment of maternal and obstetrical risk factors should be done uh, if uh, they are not done previously. We should send the patient for blood test, which is uh, screening for hematological disease. We should first screen her for, uh, do for her, sorry, CBC. And if she has risk of uh, hemat uh, hemoglobinopathies like uh, sickle cell or, or thalassemia, we should screen for them also. For infections, random blood sugar should be done for all pregnant women in the, uh, in the booking visit. And if she had history of uh, gestational diabetes, we should send her for oral glucose tolerance test. The other investigation that should be done to the patient uh, is uh, screening for asymptomatic bacteria. In each visit we see the pregnant woman, we should do for her general urine exam because any UTI, whatever it is very uh, mild, it should be treated even if it is asymptomatic because it can be complicated and uh, be, uh, may even maybe may lead to uh, pyelonephritis. So any UTI should be treated during a pregnancy. The other important examination uh, investigation that we should send the patient for is the ultrasound. And the ultrasound, which is done between 11 to 13 weeks of gestation, is uh, termed as dating scan. The dating scan is very important because uh, in it we first we will confirm the uh, pregnancy and the site of a pregnancy, whether it is intrauterine or ectopic, the viability of the fetus, the gestational age of the fetus, and also the number of uh, sacs. For example, if the patient uh, getting pregnant with a twin or a triplet, and the type of coronicity, and it should be determined in the first trimester. Also, if the patient have, for example, ovariances, fibroid, um, uh, sometimes even anomalies of the uterus can be detected by the uh, dating scan. And the other important thing that we should screen for it is the Down syndrome by measuring the tra uh, knuckle translucency. Uh, by the dating scan. So it is very important. Uh, the second important thing is we should do uh, uh, an examination to the patient. We should measure her uh, body mass index. We should measure her blood pressure. And this is very important because the measurement of blood pressure is a method of screening for hypertension. And uh, uh, we should uh, give her advice uh, about her pregnancy care, uh, the place of birth, can we discuss with it, and about breastfeeding.
these points are uh, very important to be done in the booking visit in the second trimester uh, we have two important visits that should be done the uh, at 16 week and at uh, 20 to 22 weeks the routine uh, this, uh, at 16 week it is a routine visit we also should measure the blood pressure of the patient we sent her for CBC to know her hemoglobin level and test for proteinuria with a measurement of blood pressure. Proteinuria, we tested for it by general urine exam and also uh, for any uh, evidence of uh, UTI. At the 20 to 20 weeks gestation, uh, we should advise the, uh, the pregnant woman uh, for doing ultrasound, which is uh, turned as a normal scan in which the sonorist will screen for any structural anomalies of the fetus. In the third trimester, we have routine visits at 28 weeks, uh, 28 weeks and uh, also when the patient uh, become 10. Also, we should measure the blood pressure, screen for proteinuria and any uh, infection, UTI, uh, CBC, and if the patient uh, have our uh, blood group which is negative, we should screen for antibodies, and if, the, if she don't have any antibodies, we should offer her a uh, dose of NTD, and it is a prophylactic dose. At 28 weeks, we should repeat the measurement of the random blood uh, sugar level, and if she had history of gestational diabetes and uh, at the booking visit we do for her uh, OGTT and it was normal, we should repeat it at the 28 weeks of gestation. In the uh, third trimester, with each visit, uh, we should measure the symphysis fundal height. Uh, the fundal height is very important uh, because we, uh, even if it is not specific and it's affected by uh, many uh, factors, factors, uh, but it is important uh, to know because if it is uh, the fundal height is very low for gestational age, there is an, uh, causes for it, and if it is very uh, large for gestational age, uh, also there are uh, pathological causes for this condition. At uh, term, when we, uh, the, the pregnant woman come, we should assess her if for uh, any uh, factors that uh, may uh, complicate her pregnancies. For example, some patients may have presented for the first time with hypertension or the gestational diabetes. <clears throat> and uh, we should do pelvic examination to assess her pelvis in a process termed as pelvimetry. And this is done for the primary uh, gravide uh, to know if she had any uh, forms of cephalopelvic disproportion and we should discuss with the patient the place of birth and mode of delivery. What are the common pregnancy complications that may uh, affect uh, the pregnant women? And uh, many of them is because the, uh, the physiological changes of a pregnancy. Uh, some women will have backache, and this is because of the uh, stretching of the uh, ligaments uh, when the pregnant uterus enlarged uh, in, uh, in size. There will be stretching on the ligaments, and also uh, the vertebral column. Uh, the shape of it will change during a pregnancy. Uh, the excessive weight that may occur during a pregnancy should be avoided because uh, it will uh, increase the pain in her. Uh, we advise her for rest and elevation of her legs to flex the hips and massage to the back muscles and sometimes the patient may need analgesia to relieve the pain. Leg cramps is also one of the common complications. Uh, and the management of it is by supplementary calcium therapy after the principal meals may be effective. We can add calcium after 20 weeks of gestation. 
in addition to massage and application of local heat, heat sorry, and uh, vitamin B. Nausea and vomiting of a pregnancy is very, very common condition that may affect the pregnant woman. And uh, we should exclude any medical disease that may lead to nausea uh, and vomiting during a pregnancy because, uh, for example, UTI may cause nausea and vomiting, cholecystitis, appendicitis, uh, patients who have, for example, uh, hypertension may have vomiting. So we should exclude all the diseases, whether it is medical or surgical, that may cause to vom uh, vomiting. Uh, and if all of them are not present, so the patient will diagnose as a case of nausea and vomiting of pregnancy. So it is a diagnosis of exclusion. We advise the patient to take dry toast, biscuit, and protein uh, rich meals with the frequent small foods are helpful for her. Uh, fatty foods are avoided and uh, in uh, some women, we may need to add medication, antiemetics, to treat this condition. Constipation is another uh, common symptom that the pregnant women may present with it, and it's because of the effect of progesterone on the bowel, and even some of them may have bleeding or complicated by hemorrhoids or fissures. For so the treatment of it is regulation of diet, taking plenty of fluids is very important, vegetables and milk or prescribing stool softeners at bedtime uh, may treat the condition of health. Acidity and heart heartburn is common due to relaxation of the esophageal sphincter. The patient is advised to avoid overeating and not to go to bed immediately after the meal. And we may need to add uh, anti-acid to her. Varicose vein is due to obstruction uh, in the venous return by the pregnant uterus. For leg varicosity, elastic crepe bandage during uh, movement and elevation of the limbs during rest can give uh, symptomatic relief. Specific therapy is better to be avoided during a pregnancy because uh, those symptoms, uh, all of them, all of these symptoms uh, will resolve after delivery. So anything uh, which can treat treated conservatively and with ad addition of medication, we should uh, follow it without any surgical intervention. Specific therapy is better to be avoided to varicosity as varicosities usually disappear following delivery. Uncle edema, no treatment is required for physiological edema or orthostatic edema. Edema subsides on rest with slight elevation of the limbs. Diuretic should not be prescribed for treatment of ankle edema. It is contraindicated. The only indication of diuretics during pregnancy is in the treatment of pulmonary edema. Just. Hemorrhoids, as I told you, is one of the complications and is an annoying complication. Uh, the treatment of it is the regular use of laxative to keep uh, the, power, uh, the bowel soft, local application of hydrocortisone ointment and replacements of the pile manually if a prolapsed, uh, and also surgical treatment is better to be avoided because the condition will improve following delivery. Vaginal discharge. Women should be informed that an increase in vaginal discharge is a common physiological change that occurs during a pregnancy. But if it is associated with itching, soreness, offensive smell, or pain on passing urine, there may be an infective cause and investigation should be considered. Topical imidazole, not oral, because oral imidazole are uh, oral antifungal drugs are 
contraindicated during a pregnancy, we should give to the patient topically either in form of suppositories or uh, ointments uh, to treat vaginal candidiasis uh, if it occur and uh, sometimes uh, pregnant women also may have bacterial vaginosis uh, we can treat her either with oral uh, metronidazole or topical metronidazole this is the end of the first part of the lecture and then we will continue with the second part in another video thank you